going with with where we're headed as a culture, and you're talking about how we we are countercultural. How then do we speak and be countercultural without aligning ourselves with a politic that seems to be? I feel like we we lose our witness and the authenticity of our witness by siding with those. Let's go with the Trump factor. Someone who would was giving religious freedom, but yet himself so personally was so devoid of it. Because in the churches that I've served, I've seen such a division because we had so many different ethnicities and they came with their own different politics for the church. And there wasn't one line across the board. And and I've seen this played out ad nauseum, it seems like, every time I turn around. And I hear people say, how can you testify or say you unite with someone like that? And yet um, you lose some credibility in the long run. I mean, what, what is your insight on that going forward? Travis, when you say you came with all the different ethnicities with their own different politics. Yeah. In other words, they're cultural politics, whatever they were, left, mm-hmm. right, or wherever. I'm talking about starting with a biblical politics. So the word takes on the world. Now, we've got to do that. It's tough with politics. Now, evangelicals have a very poor view of politics. Mm-hmm. You know, we identify with the early church, which had no political role. Right. And so they concentrated on other things. And we identify with that. So I first came to this country in 68, as I said. I only met one person. Here's the high noon of the 60s, this radically culturally formative decade. I only met one person, Carl Henry, who understood what was going on. Mm. Those people I met, the evangelicals, were just out of it. They were shocked, lamented, disagreed. They were out of it. If you look politically... You know, it was said of evangelicals in the 60s that they were privately engaging, publicly irrelevant. So we started pietistic and privatized and mostly Mm -hmm. apolitical. The 60s woke people up and abortion was the factor. And then 75, the rise of moral majority. We swung from overly privatized to overly politicized. Now, turn that into American history. It was in the 1920s and 30s that the radical left started what they called politicization. In other words, you turn everything into a political issue Mm -hmm. as a matter of secularized politics. And we've fallen for that. It has its illusions. If we get our people in power, we'll be fine. So you look at the George W. Bush administration, you had an evangelical president, evangelical attorney general, secretary of state, leader of the... They were all inept didn't make any difference culturally at all. Now, you mentioned Trump. His policies, infinitely more beneficial to the gospel and the church than the Biden ones. Agree. Biden ones could be absolutely pernicious on religious yes. freedom and all sorts of areas. But evangelicals should have said, we support your judges. We support Israel. We support pro-life, et cetera, et cetera. But Mr. President, you've got to cut down on those insulting tweets. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you look biblically, evil speech is tantamount to murder. Mm -hmm. The rabbis stress that. And you mentioned that in the book. We have a high view of truth and loving our enemies and the high view of words. Words create worlds, words destroy worlds. We should be the champions of civility. Mr. President, your tweets were disgusting. And we will not back you if you go that way, and so on. And that was, we should have said, here we support you, here we question you. We're not just unquestioning supporters. If we'd done that, we might have come out better. We got to do that. The left has got to do that with the Biden administration now. They were the never Trumpers haven't given up on attacking Trump. They're mm. still doing it. Where are the voices showing the implications for the gospel of the present administration? 